that's the business part of the process. So um, I know some of you have entered this a few times, so you'll be, you know, well aware of the process and, and the um, scoring and things. But obviously, it's always good to have a refresher. Um, it's going to be led by Lucinda. Um, she has a award-winning um, writing series, so she's a veteran at writing awards for national award ceremonies as well. Obviously, this one will be tailored to Doncaster, but the skills you pick up, you'll be able to utilise uh, across any award ceremonies. We're actually in our twenty-third year of the awards. Um, and we feel that this year is going to be more important than ever because hopefully um, we are aiming to take it back to the race course. So it'll be a live event. And I think it'll just be really necessary, you know, to celebrate the resilience of companies, the innovation of companies and how they've handled surviving and also trying to grow where they can in what's kind of unprecedented circumstances. Um, we have got um, Stuart from Orb Recruitment. Um, they were winners in the ASME category last year um, and they scored very highly in the written process. They were one of the highest scorers. So he'll be offering his perspective as a winner. And we've also got Jade, who is the business director for Doncaster Chamber. She's judged both stage one and stage two. So she'll be offering a judge's perspective as well. There'll be a chance to ask questions. So if you have got any questions, um, please let us know. And just to let you know, we are recording the session. So we can send you that afterwards. If you don't want to be recorded, please just feel free to turn your cameras off. Um, that's not a problem. So Lucinda, I'll hand over to you. And um, I hope every, everybody enjoys the session and finds it, finds it really useful. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Rebecca. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, so welcome everybody uh, to this awards masterclass today. Um, I hope you're going to find it really valuable and, and interesting and, and give you some insight into the awards themselves, the benefits of them, uh, and also how to put your entry together as well. So great. So we shall get started. Um, OK, so today is going to uh, run for probably about an hour and a half. Um, there will be a chance, like we said, to to ask questions throughout the process. Uh, but, you know, if you've got anything um, you want to keep to the end, then we'll still be around at the end to answer any questions then if you prefer. OK, so a little bit about myself. Um, my company is Pure Awards and I've been writing business award entries for clients for about 10, 15 years now. Uh, my background is fundraising and events, so I do bid writing and fundraising services for clients as well. Um, I, I prepare all sorts of different documents for my clients, whether it's an award planner to help you get started, uh, whether it's doing a professional critique, a check and send service, or whether it's writing the full thing. So I've got lots and lots of experience from different areas and different sides of um, the coin, really. Uh, I've also been a judge as well, so I, I do um, approach the award writing side of things from a judge's perspective as well and try to make that um, as easy for them to digest as well. Okay. So we do have a plan of action for today. Um, we are going to be doing a, an overview of awards and the benefits for anybody who's very new to the whole process, um, looking at the benefits of entering and of winning, of course, the actual awards themselves, uh, some best practice and top tips, which will help you get you in the right place for putting your entry together and preparing it and presenting it to the judges. And then some additional support at the end from um, with in the form of offers and that sort of thing. So can't go from a webinar without an offer. Um, <laughs> okay, so where did it all begin? Um, so really we've had awards in our, our lifetime, you know, and in our, our being for, for hundreds of years. Um, you know, it does date back to ancient Greece with the Olympics and everything. Um, you know, people have been rewarding and recognizing the hard work and the efforts of, and the successes. Um, you know, by presenting them with some kind of recognition, whether it's a laurel, whether it's a certificate or whatever, so or a medal, um, you know, and that just really has evolved over time, uh, you know, and it, it's come into every part of, of what we do now. And you'll see, <clears throat> excuse me, from anything from the film industry, the music industry, supermarkets, etc. you know, you'll you'll notice awards everywhere now. So from being on this course, I'm 
you know, you're quite likely to sort of suddenly recognise an award-winning company here, an award-winning product there, and and it's much more in your, you know, your your awareness. Um, and and I just want to say, you know, these companies spend a lot of money advertising the fact that they are an award-winning business or an award-winning product or service or um, you know, food or wine. You know, they put a lot of effort into that and spend a lot of money on television advertising which makes the awards have a huge value to them. You know, they recognize how much, uh, how important it is for their business um, and in their industry sector to show themselves as, as one up against their competitors. So this is quite an interesting stat. Um, you know, when Lidl announced their award-winning Christmas gins, the searches online grew by 732%. Um, you know, obviously that's tailored around some significant marketing as well, I can't deny that. But it's quite interesting that, you know, with the announcement of the award winning gins, that the uh, the interest in them grew by this number. And that's quite a lot. <laughs> so there's lots of awards out there, as you may already know. We've got the local ones like this. We've got regional ones, national industry, international chamber ones, women's ones, entrepreneurial ones, made in ones. You know, there literally are thousands of awards out there. But obviously, for the purposes of today, we're focusing on the Doncaster Chamber Awards, which are very much about highlighting the success and driving that profile for you in your local area um, to your local customers and businesses and suppliers. So why are awards good for business? There's lots of fantastic reasons why you should be entering awards and it's great that you've come on this today uh, to be able to, to get on behind it really from the, you know, the essence of it and really um, get into that good mindset about it. So absolutely, obviously it will enhance your reputation and company profile amongst your industry peers, um, amongst your customers, your staff, your suppliers, etc. It absolutely motivates your employees. So, you know, recognizing their success, their hard work that they've been putting in, you know, and rewarding them by putting them forward for a team of the year or something like that, um, you know, or perhaps just, you know, together you have achieved a great deal, particularly in these times when, you know, businesses have been struggling and firefighting a lot with all the COVID stuff that's been going on. Delivers that benchmark of excellence, gives you that industry recognition, which is so important. But I would say, you know, you can't just sit back on your laurels. Once you've won, you can't sit back and just think, oh yeah, we're gonna win again next year. You know, your competitors will be looking at you, seeing that you've won and going, hang on a second, I want some of that. I don't want them to win next year, we want to win. So what can we do to work harder, be smarter, put our entry together in a better way, you know, that might compete and, and win and, and take that uh, um, award from them effectively from the following year. So, you know, you can't sit back and just think you're just gonna be able to, to, to win every year. It's a really, really tough process. And, you know, you've got to keep moving. As in business, you've got to keep moving and you've got to keep bringing those stories to life. And that's what you've got to share through the awards. Gives you a perfectly good chance to actually sit down and take a few moments um, to review and analyze what you have achieved in your business. And often we're so involved in the business that we don't get a chance to look up about what we've done and celebrate the wins that we've had. And, um, you know, the, the writing the awards is all about the wins. It's all about the successes and it's all about the good news stories. So that's what you want to look at. And so by doing the process of actually looking at the awards, um, you know, and looking at the criteria and the categories, you'd be able to pull out some some celebrations from your business that perhaps you'd overlooked, uh, you know, and it gives you a nice chance to sort of reflect, um, you know, and reward yourselves as a result. Obviously, you've got lots of PR opportunities, whether they're local ones, um, you know, regional ones or international, national. You know, there's so many opportunities there to grow your business through um, from promoting the fact that you've won or you've been successful in awards. Uh, I had a client who literally she entered some awards. She went on to BBC Radio Nottingham. She then got into the papers since winning the first award. She's now been in over 90 different publications, whether that's, you know, Take a Break magazine or whatever, because of the success that she's had in her business. And we've then been able to shout about that through awards. So it's absolutely, you know, and she's she's flying with her business. So, um, you know, it's really been a huge benefit for her. 
it's lots of positive action. So, you know, by doing all of this good stuff, um, you know, and looking at the awards and looking at the, the successes in the business, you're going to be then more productive in the right way because you'll be able to see your numbers and see, hang on a second, we weren't so productive there, but actually this that we didn't quite realise was a good element for our business is the way to go forward. And then you can be more productive in that area and progress forward. There is a financial return from entering business awards as well. OK, you may have the cost of the dinner, et cetera, but that's a great networking event, you know, and it's not to be sniffed at in that respect. Um, but certainly from, you know, the the marketing and the promotion that you will do from promoting the fact that you've won or been involved with the awards, you will get that return on investment and there will be that financial return, which we'll cover shortly. So this is a great stat um, and 80% uh, of business of people who make buying decisions will choose an award winning business over a non award winning business. So, you know, it is important. People do want to be connected and related to success. If you are two businesses and, you know, you're, you're selling the same product at the same price, but one business is award winning, the other business isn't realistically the buyer is going to go with the award winning because they've got that third party recognition, that stamp of approval from elsewhere. So, you know, it naturally um, attracts customers and people to you. OK, so we're going to do a little bit of a poll now, um, a little bit of a quiz. And if we were in the room together, there would be prizes and it would be very exciting and we'd be in teams and everything. But this is a very short, sweet version of it. So. This is based on a, a study that was done uh, by the British Quality Foundation a number of years ago, um, obviously pre-COVID and non-recession times, so bear that in mind. Now, it did track 120 award-winning companies against 120 similar companies that weren't award-winning, and it tracked them over a three-year period. And some were small businesses, some were large businesses. And what it did was it tracked their success after winning the award compared to the non-winning businesses. Uh, and it was the only study that has been done actually in recent times um, that proves the value of awards and helps us really reaffirm why we're putting so much effort into writing these when, you know, they can be a little bit of an arduous task. And I understand that, uh, you know, but there are some, some serious returns to be made. So what I'm going to do is share three, three key points um, and there's gaps in there which require a percentage. Now, then I'm going to open it up to the floor and then we will ask you to submit your from the multiple choice answers, submit what you think is the correct percentage to go in the gaps. And then I'll share those afterwards. It's just a little bit of a, a bit of fun, really. So don't try and deliberate over it too long. We'll literally have like a minute to put your question, your answers together. So, OK, so we'll start off. So the first one is smaller award winning companies have experienced a something growth in sales after the first year of winning a business award. The second is large award winning companies enjoyed a something growth in sales after winning their award. And then the final one is in the last year of monitoring winning companies experienced even greater increases against the performance of comparison companies with sales growing by an average of something. So again, that's after your three years. So if uh, we can just open the poll now. Rebecca, that's over to you. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> there we go, perfect. So if we just take a minute to answer these. And then click submit when you're ready. How's everyone doing? Are we all submitted? Ah, I can't see any poll answers. Are you have you found them now, Tracy? No. Where should I be looking? Should I be looking somewhere different on my screen? I don't think so. 
Um, Do you mean the answers are the questions? I can see the questions that uh, Lucinda's put up, the ABC, but I can't see anything else. Should I? Yeah, there should be like a poll like box that comes up in the middle of the screen, I think. No, I've not got anything like that. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Don't worry. Can other people see it? Is it just me? I don't know. Is anybody else? Can everybody else see it? I can't be Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Might just be me then. Not to worry. I'll just listen. Okay. I have a question. You've got no answers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I think if if we have. Um, it might be that the poll has to finish, maybe. Um, so if uh, once everybody's voted, has everybody voted? Because I can end it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'll end it and let's hope that. Uh... Okay. <laughs> Right. Have we we got the responses. There we go. We've got some responses. Brilliant. Okay. Um, okay. So in the if we when we do a live session, it's quite interesting because we have some people right with the very very low answers and some people with extremely high answers. So it's great to see how people gauge the value of awards when I do this. And um, so the answers um, for the questions are. Uh, we have 39% um, for a smaller award-winning company in growth in sales. So if you are a small business, um, just, you know, take a few moments to write down what your turnover has been in the last 12 months and then work out what 39% of that turnover is and just see how much of a value that will add to your business. Um, you know, it's quite significant. So, you know, that can be related and directly related to the benefits of awards. So it, I think these are quite useful stats to have in the back of your mind. If you've got anybody in the business, perhaps who's thinking, oh, why are you spending so much time doing this? And, you know, what are we going to get back from it? It's just a, a bit of a booze up at the end of the year. Well, actually, it's not. It can be a real strategic uh, move for you in your business. So for the large winning companies, um, You've got 37%. So again, it's quite a significant amount for a large business. And then in the last year, we've got 77%, which again, you know, is really amazing. So, you know, if you're you kind of shout about the fact that you're doing some awards, look at the potential that you can have from a financial uh, aspect. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the Doncaster Business Awards themselves. Um, and we're just going to do sort of an overview of some logistics side of it and then talk about categories, uh, et cetera, as well. So um, I know, Rebecca, you did a bit of an introduction at the at the start about the awards. Is there anything else at this point that you would like to say in terms of welcoming people into the awards themselves? Um, I don't think so. I mean, as a chamber, um, as Doncaster Chamber, we're really proud of our awards. Um, for, for a smaller chamber, um, in comparison to some of the chambers across the UK, we've actually had the BCC up to our awards to see what makes it so successful, why people value it so much. And we get, you know, entrants um, who enter year after year, um, showing the value of, you know, raising your profile and and being involved in that kind of, it's a quite a local community event. Obviously, Doncaster's um, very big on community um, and kind of the local area. So I think it's a big event for the business community um, and being, you know, entered in there, um, especially if you get through to that finalist stage, gets you that, that, that brand awareness, you know, regardless of obviously winning is amazing, but you are still in the programme, you are still on the, you know, list and things. So all the aspects through to, to winning are, um, are, you know, really important for your company. And the event itself, you know, it's, it's a really positive event, which I think this year um, will be hopefully appreciated more than ever. But, you know, it's a positive event and the companies we've had entered who have won have 
got a lot off the back of it and you know a lot of business off the back of it as well so that's probably all I've got really at the minute because I think the rest of it will come through the stage where I'm judging and things but if there's anything else at the end then obviously I'll be happy to answer questions. Lovely that's brilliant thank you Rebecca great okay so yeah it's a fantastic event great that it's uh, um, still been in the uh, in the calendar for everybody over this uh, difficult times as well so Okay, so a bit of a rules recap here. Um, it's open to the Doncaster Chamber members and any Doncaster uh, business with a DM postcode or any business with a DM postcode. It's free for the Doncaster Chamber members, um, £50 plus fat for non-members. The deadline is 16th of July, so it's you know four weeks away, a month away, which is why we decided to host this session today. Um, you can provide a maximum of three pieces of evidence to support the submission um, as well, which is really valuable and really important. And it's not it's not um, mandatory, but it is recommended. And we go through that at the end. Um, maximum word count is 400 words per question. Uh, and you've usually got six questions in the entry. Um, again, we'll look at that in a moment. Now, unusually, and fabulously, I have to say, feedback is actually available for these awards, which is generally not something that awards programmes do. Um, so it is absolutely brilliant that you do get feedback because that will certainly help you. If you don't win, um, you know, you've got that evidence there to be able to work on and, and restructure and perhaps, you know, tweak a few things for, for the next year's entry. So that's really, really fab. So I just want to to commend all the team there for, for doing the feedback because I know it's not an easy job, um, but it's so, so valuable. Um, you know, when you're writing, you want to know where you've done well and where you haven't done so well. Uh, so that's brilliant to do that. Okay, there's two stages to the judging process. Um, this one here is the first stage of doing the writing side of things. And then there's a judge's visit, um, which is the second stage. So today is very much focused on stage one, but we will just run through what's expected for stage two. The finalists will be announced in August. Um, the stage two judging takes place in September. So you have to make sure that you're available for the dates that have been um, put on the entry forms themselves. And then the awards are announced at the uh, ceremony, which is in December. So. Fingers crossed, COVID allowing, everything will be as it should be for that day. Okay, so this stage one judging, um, it's relatively straightforward in that the criteria answers are scored on a scale of one to 10. Um, the, the shortlist is six finalists per category. And, um, you know, the panel themselves make up a representation of uh, Doncaster Chamber and other respected organizations so you've got people who understand business understand the successes and understand you know the the conflicts and the issues and and concerns that business owners have but you also have people who don't necessarily know what your business is about so it's very important to to be really clear when you're explaining who you are as a business that clarity is there that you're not using jargon and that you're being very um you know just very concise about how uh, what your business does. Um, this, this side of things, this part of the judging and the entry process itself is only 30% of the overall score. But like I say, if you don't crack this 30%, you haven't even got the chance to go and get the rest of that 70%. So you've got to do this bit really well and right in order to move on to the next stage. So next stage um, is the judges' visits. And, you know, you'll have two representatives of the judging panel who will come out to um, to come and judge and you know discuss your business with you in your business um, around an hour and a half, an hour and 15 minutes. Um, you get a chance to do a, a presentation that won't be scored, but then um, there will be some other questions that the judges will prepare and ask you. And those will be the scored items. Um, so again, this is 70%, so it's quite a significant amount, but you've got to get stage one right first. After that, um, the judges add up all the scores and, you know, do create the results for everyone to be shared. And then the entrance with the highest overall scores 
are confirmed as winner winner with the runner up um, for each category. So it's uh, you know it's quite a lengthy process and quite an administrative process for the team. Uh, you know they put a lot of effort into making sure it's very transparent and clear and fair. Um, and dealt with in a very professional manner. So, you know, there's a lot of effort put into it. So in order to put yourselves forward, we also then have to put a lot of effort into the entry to make it um, stand out from the others. So the entry forms themselves, if anybody hasn't had a look at them or downloaded any of them yet, you'll be, it's a, an editable PDF document. So you can type into the document itself. Um, the criteria, there's an overview uh, sheet, which looks like this where you have your criteria points and those are essentially your questions that you would be expected to answer. A um, bit blurry I'm afraid but this um, gives you the key dates, it's got all the information in that document that you'll need to enter that category. You need to obviously put details in there, company information, turnover, employee numbers, that sort of thing and then you get into the nitty-gritty of the questions. So like it says here, maximum of 400 words um, you know, you can type straight into that, but my recommendation would be that you do it on a Word document. You save each version of that because you will undoubtedly start with more than 400 words to put your entry in um, for each question. But, you know, as you edit down, you're actually going to be taking out quite a lot of content there. So what you want to do is make sure that you save each version as you go along and then for future ones, um, and other awards, you can then pull on that content because it might be a 600 word answer and you've then you've almost got that prepared. OK, so now we're going to go through the top tips and best practice in preparing our entry and hopefully impressing the judges. Now, just want to say, obviously, I can't tell you exactly how what sentence is going to make the judges go, wow, that's amazing. But what I can do is make sure that the purpose of today is putting you in the right frame of mind, giving you some tools and techniques to prepare and craft that entry together, making sure that it really hits the nail and, you know, gets over the line, really, you know, so that you are recognised and rewarded for the successes and the achievements that you've had. And for me, it's a little bit like cooking. So you've got lots of ingredients in there. You've got, you know, all your stories in there. You've got your people, you've got your testimonials, your facts, your figures all of that that needs to go in the mix and then at the end of it that needs to come out and be presented and served to the judges for them to enjoy and hopefully um, give you a tip at the end of it so you know which will be the award. So the recipe for success um, so you obviously have to have somebody who's going to pull all of this together now it might be yourself on the call today um, it could be somebody else that you're having to feed back to but you know if you are the chef effectively there's some skills and some knowledge that you're going to need uh, to be able to put this together. So I, in hindsight, would allow around 12 hours to do all of this. Um, it's probably going to, if you've done it before, it may take you much less time. But if you're starting from scratch, it could well take you around 12 hours to pull it together. Um, cooking time. Uh, is when it's with the judges. Obviously, that can be anything from two to four months. In this case, it might be a little bit longer. And who does it serve? It serves your staff, your customers, your suppliers, investors, stakeholders, shareholders, consultants, etc. Anybody who is associated with your business can benefit from you um, winning an award. So some skills that you need. You need to write effectively and concisely. So we can all write lots and lots and lots. Um, but it may be all over the place and it won't be focused and, you know, it won't be tailored down. So you need to be able to to learn. And that comes with practice as well. And um, being able to learn how to make things really clear in a shorter number of words, because, you know, when you look at 400 words, it feels like a lot. But actually, if you've got a business that's got a lot to say, it just sometimes isn't enough. Uh, knowledge. So you need to be able to have that knowledge and have access to that knowledge. Um, in that respect, you know, you need to know what the business goals are, what the strategies are, the vision for the future, information about the different projects that you've done, um, be able to access all the financial figures, be, um, you know, in a position to be able to present them in the best way that's not obviously um, going to be, you know, off mark for whatever reason. You need to be able to have time. So you've got to be able to put that time in your diary um, to allocate specific uh, um, focus to this award 
And with your facts and your figures, you've got to be honest, but you can be creative with that honesty. And I'm not in any way advocating anybody be, you know, kind of inflate any numbers or, or be, um, you know, not say anything that's absolutely true because the judges will do their due diligence and they will look into your business and they can look on the company's house and they can look at all of this, you know, um, and then it will come out in the wash if you get past stage one and you go to stage two and suddenly you've got a dilapidated building and you've only got one staff and you said you've got 20, um, you know, it, it, it will all come out. So, you know, what you need to do is be able to present your figures um, so that it's showing the best figure that is a true figure rather than, for instance, if you're doing, um, you know, you've had a 100 percent increase in client numbers um, and or turnover. Um, but perhaps that turnover has been relatively small because you've just a brand new business and, you, you know, you're really starting out. Then, you know, the fact that you've done 100 percent increase in turnover is probably your better figure than perhaps doing £20,000 more in turnover. So it's about using the information that you've got and presenting that in the most honest and creative way. OK, so tip number one, um, like I keep saying, I'm afraid it's about making time. So if anybody um, doesn't know of Brian Tracy, he's like the guru of time management. Um, absolutely go and, you know, sign up to his newsletters and, and go and read some of his books because time is, is something that we all need in business anyway. We all need to be able to use it effectively. And that's the absolute key with this. So make sure you're planning your diary properly. Um, and I would highly recommend you move the deadline and bring it forward by about a week so that you're actually looking at the 9th of July rather than the 16th of July. That will give you a week to either do editing and proofing or it will give you a chance to, you know, if there's any issues with people going off sick or whatever, who's going to be doing and helping this with you. Or if you're waiting on testimonials or information from third parties. You've got to get writing. So you've just got to make a stab at it. Um, and I'll give you some ways in which you can approach that, because none of you want to be like these guys who completely missed the boat at the end. You know, it is relatively short deadline time. Four weeks is not very long, but it is plenty of time for you to get cracking and get moving with it. So some time management tools, obviously planning. This is part of the planning process as you're doing now. You know, you need to map out exactly what you need for each question um, and go ahead and go and then start bringing it in and collating it all. So the time that you spend actually looking through the detail of it in full will give you that benefit later on because it won't only serve you for these awards, it may serve you for, you know, a lot of future awards going forward. Avoidance behaviour. So you need to stop avoidance behaviour. Now, that's things like I'll just go make myself a coffee and then I'll sit down and do it. I'll just answer this email and then I'll do it. I'll just do this. I'll just do that. Well, we just have to stop it. Um, you know, you've really got to focus yourself on doing this. I know it's, you know, it really a lot of people don't enjoy writing awards. And I understand that. I love it, obviously, because this is what I do. But a lot of people don't enjoy it. And it is a bit of a minefield. And, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I don't have time for this. Well, actually, if you apply some of the things like the single handling technique, where you literally you turn your Wi-Fi off, you turn your phone off, you, you know, lock yourself in a in a in a small office room, you know, with no distractions and you just focus on preparing that question number one, you know, and don't leave until it's absolutely done. The more you do that type of um, focus, the quicker you will get, the more productive you will be. Um, you know, and then you'll be able to rattle through this without too many problems. Also, you know, you want to eat that frog, which again is a Brian Tracy um, term and and book. Uh, and if you imagine the award itself, writing the award is this enormous, great big frog on your desk that's just getting stinkier and bigger and smellier and more disgusting. Um, if you actually eat that frog first at the beginning of the day, you know, you're going to be cleared of that for the rest of the day. Now, this is a bit of a frog, you know, you know, not, it's not everybody's best um, project to be working on. And it is, a, you know, it can be quite a, a big task to do. Um, but, you know, if you just try and do a little bit at a time and try and get it done first thing or when you're at your most productive, eat that frog straight away and then it's off your desk and you can carry on with the rest of your um, work. 
Okay, so tip number two is defining your story. Um, this is the backbone really of any award. So you've got to have your story um, from your business. Uh, they're clear and understood when you're preparing your entry because ultimately you're telling your story um, you know, to the judges and they need to understand and read that uh, you know, and engage with that. So realistically, it's around you know, the story that we're focusing on for these awards is the last 12 months. Obviously, you can include kind of a history of where you are, how you started, you know, that journey that you've come on. But that's not what we're looking at. What we're looking at is what you've done in the last 12 months. That's the key points. So in that, what has been your greatest achievements and success stories in that time? And write them down, bullet point them down and just say, right, OK, we did this, we did this, we did this. And then that will help you identify the right categories as well. So this is a really good thing to do before you've even looked at any of the entry forms. Just get this down, get this documented down. And then what have those achievements done for the business? So what milestones have they created for you? So has it been financial growth? Have you uh, done more employment? Have you reinvested back into the business through uh, equipment? Have you expanded into new areas, into new markets? Um, into new locations? Have you been innovative in what you've done? Because you've had that success, that's given you freed up some cash for you to be able to develop a new product or, or something. So, you know, what, what's been the impact of what you've done and what you've achieved? So document that down and just sort of try, you could almost do spider di diagrams really for each individual achievement and then just stem off what your successes have been from that and, and what the, the uh, impact has been. You need to be really clear as to what makes you different from your competitors. So you need to understand what your market share is. Um, you know, where do you sit on a local perspective, on a regional perspective, on a national perspective, if that's relevant? Where do you sit uh, in terms of your industry sector? You know, who are your customers? What do they look like? Um, you know, how what's their customer spend like? You know, all of this information is really, really important. And it's you know, it may have been in a, a business, um, uh, what do you call it, a business plan of some sort, but, you know, it probably needs updating if it's not been done recently. So this is a great opportunity to get that information together. And then, like I said, that is really going to help you going forwards um, to identify one, the categories, but two, you know, it just gives you some great marketing collateral there that you can use for other things as well. So what I I'm going to do is I've got some slides that I'm going to send through Rebecca and Jade to everybody after the session, which is basically the takeaways. So, you know, you'll be able to just refer back to them and just think, OK, these are the key things I need to do right now. Um, so that some of those are are on, um, you know, that will be sent over. So it's just a quick refresh. Um, OK, so now we are going to uh, welcome Stuart Olson, who's the MD of Orb Recruitment, one of the sponsors of the Doncaster Business Awards for this year. Um, and we've invited Stuart today uh, really to give a bit of an insight into his experience of entering the awards in previous years um, to the benefits of entering and some tips that he may be able to share from his side of things. So we're going to do it as a bit of a Q&A with Stuart. So welcome, Stuart. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. How's everything with you? Okay. Yes, uh, busy as ever. So yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's morning. great. That's good. 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 Okay. So um, I'll just hand over to you. So just to give a little bit of an insight for anybody who doesn't know um, what all recruitment is and and where your focus is and uh, you know what the company is all about. Yeah, so um, Orb Recruitment are a multi-award winning uh, recruitment agency. We, we're based in Doncaster and we've just sort of set up some offices in Edinburgh as well to give us a bit of a presence further afield. Um, and we started in 2017. Um, we sort of provide open and transparent recruitment services for temporary and permanent staffing uh, across sort of four sectors, really. So industrial, um, engineering, construction and healthcare. Excellent, excellent. So, so what made you... Um, feel obviously relatively new business um, you know four years um, when did you start entering awards and which awards you know why did you think that the Doncaster ones would be the benefit ones for you? 
Um, so we, over the last few years, we became sort of more increasingly involved with Doncaster Chamber. Um, we entered, I think the first award was 2019. Uh, we entered the Chamber Awards in the startup category. Um, and then sort of following on from that, we had quite a good success in that when we won the award. And then we, we followed on with a couple more entries the year after. Um, I think the, the, the sort of motivators behind entering were... Um, that it sort of improves our position against competitors if, if we do win. So we've got something to shout about. Um, it heightens our exposure because we, we get all the publicity and, and things like that in the background from the Chamber. Uh, it would do a fantastic job of that. Um, and then also to reward our staff as well. So at the end of the year, obviously, it is, it is a good night out. The event is fantastic. So we, we take all the staff out and, and reward them as well for the hard work that we've done. Yeah, great. Um, so which award did you actually win? Was it this last last award that you won? Yeah, so yeah. last year we won um, SME Business of the Year. Um, we were runner-up in the Excellence in CSR category as well, so we actually entered two. Yeah. Um, we, we sort of looked through the potential categories and, and, and tried to find out or, or tried to picture where our business would best fit in those categories. Um, and we weren't going to enter the CSR one originally, but when we were going through the process of looking through the information for the, the SME award, we sort of recognise that actually we do do a lot in the community. We do give a lot back. We're involved with charities. So we thought, well, let's let's enter this, the other award as well and, and go in for two. Yeah. Um, Again, that's, that's looking at that review process as well, isn't it? And actually just taking that bit of time to reflect on where you've been, you know, and, and what you've achieved and what you have done. Because um, perhaps you wouldn't have thought of doing that uh, and entering yeah. that category if you hadn't taken that time out to look in a bit deeper. It's it's a good it's a good um, sort of project to, to benchmark where you are as a business because we sort of said at the time we, we think we're doing well as a business but it's great to sort of actually reflect on that and look where you are what you've achieved and also to have that external viewpoint as well of, of when the judges are sort of speaking to you and running through uh, business strategy and things like that it's it's a great great opportunity to sort of benchmark where you are and, and look inwards through it as well. Yeah, yeah. So what uh, do you feel have been the benefits of of winning the awards then over the last few years? What's um, that brought to your business? So uh, I think you've covered quite a few of the benefits that, that we've actually experienced as well. So we, we have seen an increase in sales. We, we have experienced that um, increased brand awareness. We've done a lot of publicity around it. Um, the, the staff internally were, were quite motivated once we'd won the awards. So uh, it's not just you sort of sat there saying, well, this is what it could do. And this it, it, mm. it does happen. That is what what we've sort of um, achieved out of it. And that's what we've got the on the back of winning the awards oh that's great that's great so have you got any tips um for any uh entrants who are looking to enter this year on either whether it's you know how you put your entry together how you you know how maybe how much time you you put aside to put it together that sort of thing you know what kind of uh it wasn't on the back of a fag packet, I hope. <laughs> uh, no, no, we, we spent a lot of time actually putting together all, all, all the evidence and, and pulling together our story. I think, I mean, I'm in quite a unique position because as well as entering them, I've judged the, the awards last year and I'm judging again this year. So I can I can sort of see it from both sides. Um, I think the, the, the sort of main tips would be if you're using data, if you're using metrics or, or, or key measurements, make sure that you know your figures, make sure you don't trip yourself up and contradict yourself in the in the written submission and make sure you've got evidence to back those up as well. Because once you get past that written stage and the judges will be sort of poking the noses in and, and, and trying to find out whether you have actually achieved those figures or um, whether you, what you're saying you are doing, you, you're doing as a business. Yeah. Um, I think trying to be unique in your submission I know last year when I was judging, there were a couple of companies that did uh, supporting evidence as sort of videos um, and created some content for that. So that was quite unique. That made them stand out. I don't know if that's in line with, um, fully in line with the rules, but it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't um, discounted. So, uh, but yeah, that was quite unique. Um, and then just, yeah, make sure you're, you're utilising everything everything that you've got in your sort of toolbox, really. So utilise the word count, utilise your sporting evidence. We we sort of found that we were trying to cut things out because we've gone over the word count. So if you're scraping around trying to reach 400, then you need to be really sort of thinking about what you can include because we, like I say, we were we were sort of 600 words plus when we when we initially did the first draft. So it was, it was yeah. trying to decide what to cut out and, and, and what to keep in, really. So, um, yeah, I think... The, the spider diagrams and, and that sort of thing are fantastic ideas to help, help people sort of put together the submissions. Yeah, great stuff, great. So has anybody got any questions for Stuart at all or um, at this stage? We've got, anybody got anything? 
if not then you know again we'll be open to questions at the end if you want to just save them up and see if they're going to be covered over but thank you ever so much Stuart that's brilliant um really appreciate you being involved today and and thank you for that insight I think it's it's always great to to have somebody who's experienced it firsthand you know from and and again from both sides of the story as well from the judge's perspective as well as the the entrance you know and had that success and and reaping the benefits of it so um hopefully you'll be continue to be multi-award winning as you go forward as well so that's great <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> lovely thank you very much cheers <laughs> okay Great. So tip number three is about choosing your category. Um, now we have a number of categories here. And what I've done is um, I'm just going to pull each one out uh, very, very briefly, because otherwise we're going to go way over time if we go into too much depth with each one. Um, but there's a number of categories here. And I, I would suggest that, you know, don't just go for one. Try to look at how you fit in, like Stuart had said, you know, how, you know, definitely going for one category. But actually, as they were exploring that, they realized they did so much more um, and that helped them fit into another category as well. So, you know, it, and looking at your story is the absolute key there and, and just finding out what you what you can achieve um, and which to go for. So we've got excellence in customer service, um, you know, and when you're looking at this, uh, you know, these are just sort of the headlines from the criteria, not the questions themselves, but it's got to jump off the page. And when you're choosing your category, you've got to think, OK, so what have we done? that's going to make us stand out in that category but also how is that actually going to help us as a business going forward is this something we want to be recognized for is this something that our customers value um, and want to then buy from us as a result of having this award as well so it's got to fit into the strategy both behind the scenes and um, you know going forward as well so when you're looking at it you've got to pick out the key words so looking at things like you know for, for this for instance it's your customer service standards so write those down actually document them down at this point you know before you've even starting to started to write your entry then look at your strategy around delivering those service standards you know and the customer service what is it that makes that um, work and how does that roll out amongst the rest of the team you know, what's the business performance related to customer service? Um, how do you actually care for your customers? Um, you know, and how does your customer service drive the growth? So you want to be able to write down, even if it's in bullet point, draft point, whatever, um, you know, comments for each element of those, because ultimately that will help you build your content when you start turning it into answering the questions themselves. Excellence in people development. Again, you know, you've got your key words there. You've got evidence of access to development opportunities. So what are the opportunities within the business? Um, you know, what staff training do you offer? How much investment do you apply to that? What apprenticeship apprenticeships are offered to the staff? And then how are they able to progress through the organisation? So give examples. You might want to do a case study of an individual who's come through the team and really grown within the team and is now at a high level um, as a senior management, for instance. You know, it's it's got to be filled full of um, fabulous content there about your teams and your individuals and how much, you know, you absolutely support them. Marketing campaign, again, your key words here, you know, it's got to be original, innovative and effective. So, you know, you've got to have something that's completely different to anybody else that is truly innovative for you as a business or um, you know, the style in which it was delivered is innovative, and then what the results were, so it's the effectiveness. So that is your results. I'll just check on this question. Oh, yeah. Um, success through innovation and diversification. So yeah, I mean, innovation, I think a lot of businesses have had to diversify um, in the last 12 months. You've had to change how you operate. You've had to change who you work with. Um, who you market to, um, perhaps what you deliver, your product range, your services, all sorts of different elements to the business. And it's completely flipping things on its head. You know, that uh, if you've had success from doing that, then this is a perfect one for you. We've got success through partnerships. So have you formed a really strategic partnership with another organisation um, that's creating value 
added value, not just to the partners, the customers, and the other stakeholders. So everybody who is connected to that partnership and what your project or that delivery, you know, how is that creating the value? And then what is that? What does that actually look like? Business engaging with education. So obviously this is more about the, the companies who are connecting with schools and supporting young people to raise their career aspirations. So that's not just going in and doing, you know, just a, a quick careers talk. You know, it's more than that. You're not going to be able to do 2,400 words about one careers talk. You know, it's a real embedment, you know, of your business within the education um, system. You know, how is it that you are truly connecting those young people and giving them opportunities and raising their career aspirations and making them feel that they can come out into this world um, much more well prepared? Uh, you know, what is it that you're doing? Startup of the year, so pretty self-explanatory, but you've got to be trading under two years um, from March 2021. So, you know, again, it's it's where you've come from, where the idea came from, um, you know, what the vision is, the future, the commercial performance of that and your financial results as well. So it is very much about that true journey. And it, it's an exciting one to enter if you're a new business, you know. Um, really do have a go at it but don't be disheartened if you don't win um, or if you you know don't even get the shortlist the fact that you've documented something um, you know you can carry on working that and moving it forward we've got corporate social responsibility um, again you know everything that you're doing that is um, you know engaging with uh, being socially responsible as a company mm -hmm. uh, you know again but we want to show we want to see the value of that once your impact um, you know what is it that you're doing what are you investing into making that happen and then what are the results at the end third sector organization of the year um, you know this is for you know your charities your cic's etc um, your community groups who are really making a difference and particularly over these last 12 months um, are really really show have shown them their strength and their purpose and their need uh, amongst so many beneficiaries who've been affected particularly by the covid stuff so you know i think this is going to be quite a strong category this year and i would highly recommend that uh, if you know any um charities or cics that are close to your heart i would in the area i would highly recommend that you put uh, you know put this in front of them so please enter SME business of the year it's always a very strong category it always has a lot and lot of uh, entrance so you know a lot of people fit into this so it's natural that you would want to go for this and this is why I say don't just go for this one go for something else as well because if you don't win this one because it's very highly entered you know you may be more successful in one of the other categories large business of the year again you know it's it's a popular category you're likely to get um, quite a number of people entering that from the from the larger businesses so you know the detail um is really going to be your strength over these last uh, 12 12 months really in, in how you've been able to drive that business growth going forward um and we've got apprentice of the year this is one of um two individual categories that we have so obviously we're looking at apprentice doesn't have to be a young person it's of any age so obviously um, you know the more mature adult can go for an apprenticeship as well so it's it's about how that um, is uh, invested into that individual and what the results of they've benefit how they've benefited from it but also how they've benefited the business by being part of that as well green business of the year um, you know if you are environmentally focused and highly responsible in this area definitely this is one for you you know it is about um uh really flying the flag for living and working and operating in a different way um you know you may completely restructure everything you might have got all new fleet of vehicles which are all electric or you know you're recycling maybe way beyond what you would consider standard recycling practices you know if you're doing things that are different specific for your industry that do make you know think actually we're doing this way above what our all our competitors are doing and this stands us here and we've got these accreditations etc you know you really want to consider going for this and then um the last one here is entrepreneur of the year so this is somebody who is in the business as well 
Um, you know, it's a young person, though. So it's somebody who's up to the age of 24 who is really taking that entrepreneurial spirit through the business and making a real difference and having a huge impact on the business, its customers and delivery, etc. So, you know, this is a fantastic one for young people as well. OK, um, so in terms of the categories, if you're still a little bit unsure as to which one to go for, um, you know, have a look and download all the entry forms to have a real look at the criteria as well. But if you've got a real feel for the ones that you want to go for, start making those initial responses to the keywords that are in that criteria, because that really will shine through when you start to pull your entries together. So this is a, um, a slide which everybody, when I have the on a, a live session, always starts writing everything down. But don't panic. This will be sent over to you. It's got lots of words on there and it is just very and you know, brief over and understanding really of the kind of language that we'd be looking for um, and that's expected within the entries. Obviously, not every word is going to be relevant for every person in every entry. But, you know, we do want to see that passion. We do want to hear about your success, the impact, the innovation, the, um, the way you're measuring your results. And, you know, you've got to have the evidence there. Ultimately, you've got to be able to back everything up. Um, so this is a, always a, um, an interesting slide really to take away from it, just to help you perhaps look at different elements of the business and how you do that and how you achieve it. OK, so now we're just going to invite um, Jade, who's the business director for Doncaster Chamber, to just jump on as well with us. Um, and she's just going to give us a little bit of an insight as to um, what the judges are looking for this year. And, um, you know, from a, a, an, her experience in being a stage one and stage two judge, um, then she's able to bring something to the table. And you can ask any questions afterwards as well after this part, or you, again, you can save it to the end. So um, Jade, if you're you're there to join us. Hello, uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think, you know, your, your covering it has, has been really comprehensive. So I think you've captured, you know, almost everything that I would say as a judge. Um, but just to echo some of your comments, the, the thing that sometimes we find to surprise is that people don't read the questions properly. So their answers sometimes don't match the actual questions. So that's always the one to look out for. Um, but also, like you said, to just be clear in the answers, remembering that the judges don't know your business like you know your business. So to avoid, you know, these uh, acronyms and things like that, that we wouldn't know as judges, um, but that you're familiar with. And that can be one that we look out for. Um, and, and going back to something that you said that stage one counts for 30 percent. Um, and obviously that's a small ratio in, in the whole score. But if you don't get past this stage, you don't get on to, to stage two. So to really put thought into, you know, what you put down on paper, because that's all we've got to go on at that stage is what you write. So um, to also include measurable um, impact, because you can say what you do. It's really great to see you know, a case study or some facts and figures to really back that up. Um, and the evidence pieces that go with it, it's better, in my opinion, to supply one great piece than three really busy um, pieces that the judges have to go through. Um, remembering that the judges at stage one have to review and go through so many applications. So... Um, in my mind, you know, my, my advice would be what, you know, you don't need to have three pieces. If three pieces are what you want to use, you, you can, but it's better to have one that's high impact than three that aren't. Um, and also to remember, everybody loves a story, like you said. So really tell, tell the story of your business um, without waffling, but making sure that you include the really important information that we need to know. Um, and then my last thing is to think positively and uh, remember that the stage two <laughs> judging days are set. So already book them in your diary um, so that you've got them already planned in uh, for stage two. Worst case scenario, you have to take them out. But really bad case scenario, scenario is that those judging days don't move 
So if you can't make it, you know, even if you get through to stage two, you won't be interviewed. So just think positively and already book it in your diary. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. That's great. Um, have you uh, have you got um, an example of perhaps an award that was submitted that you felt had really just totally lost the focus of it? You know, perhaps hadn't utilised the word count. I know in my experience of judging awards previously, I had an award that um was submitted and you got 60 words as an answer for a 400 word answer um you know have you had any experience of that um at all in the past yeah yeah surprisingly um we've had people in ent enter and give us one sentence per question mm. um and what i would say you know with that is <laughs> as a judge you think that you know if you can't be bothered to work, write more than one sentence you know what does that say about your business so you know you want to put across your business the best way possible so yeah really use that word count because just seeing one line is automatically going to make a judge sort of you know question that the business behind that yeah yeah great has anybody got any questions about the judging um side of things now that we that you want to ask at this point Ooh. oh no <laughs> um i just yeah. asked about i just asked about the dates but um i've got answered that they're on the application form for september yeah i can't so, see okay. yeah. each each category um has already got two dates booked in um and they are on the um entry forms just as a reminder if anyone um, doesn't feel comfortable asking the questions now, feel free to message me them and I will um, raise them with the appropriate speaker at the end as well. Don't feel like you have you put on the spot with your questions if you want yeah. rather put them in the chat box. Lovely. Okie dokie. Right. Um, okay, well, I think we'll move on. We've got uh, a few more tips to go through, but thank you ever so much, Jade. I really appreciate your input and, and advice there. It's been really valuable and it's always great to get that insight from you know the the judge's perspective uh, and as a representative today so that's been really useful so thank you so much okay right okay we shall move on so when you're looking at putting your entry together this is all about dividing and conquering um you know it's question as one question at a time use your team time management techniques and like Jade said, read the question, reread the question and read it again and then pull it apart, you know, to make sure that you're absolutely answering it. Because you, what you'll find is when you start writing, you will go off on a tangent and then you think, oh, no, what does that actually mean? And when you read it, sometimes it means something to you. But when you actually read it or get somebody else to read it, it really doesn't mean anything at all. It's a lot of you know hot air etc so you know you've got to be really clear about answering so in order to do that um you know you can pull out the key words like i went through earlier with the the um the criteria points on the categories when you get the questions there it's about really pulling out the key words in that question and deciphering what it is that that is means for your business and how you can put it together so you've got 400 words and in that question, you may have two or three points in there. So divide the number of words by the key points in that particular question, bullet point it out in draft form, answer that, and then that's how many. And then it helps you think, OK, I can answer this. 400 words isn't quite so, you know, like rabbit in the headlights sort of scenario. After all, it isn't quite so daunting and we can put this together. And then you'll start really starting to form and craft it. In a, in a more time effective manner. Um, if you're really struggling with time, obviously delegate that out to another member of the team or perhaps the person who has more knowledge of that particular project, case study, et cetera, that you're wanting to put in. Um, delete any content that exceeds the word count and that's often the hardest part. So editing and proofing is, is something we'll cover shortly, um, but that is absolutely uh, something that you really need to be mindful of. So evidencing tools and capturing the data. There's lots of different ways that you can capture the data. Obviously, you've got things like your financial figures and your percentage growths and things like that. You know, whatever claim you're putting in, it's like um, you really have to back it up with some kind of evidence. Um, 
it's really important because that helps you know wow the judges and make them realize and things jump off the page a little bit more um you know it's been able to really show that uh, that data and that information in your business and you know i think um I do actually refer to recruitment agencies when I do these awards because you've got so much data there and you track everything in your businesses, you know, and you you're literally got everything, you know, in the systems that you use and the, the, the software that you use. You've got everything that's trackable and it's fantastic for an award entry because, you know, you can pull on loads of things, but there might be other businesses that don't track all of that. So, you know, it's about being clear about what data you need for your business to move forward and grow anyway, and then putting the processes in place to make sure that you're capturing that. Now, you might not be in a place where you've done that for these awards, um, you know, so you'll have to start doing that very quickly to get that information together. But hopefully you are all in a good place where you're able to pull out the, you know, the key bits of information to be able to tell that story and, and show the journey that you've been on. So, you know, you've got to be able to, and these are things that you can put in your supporting evidence, um, but, you know, things like the graphs and, and being able to track that progress, whether that's through your customer retention, your staff retention, your customer feedback, um, you know, your bookings, your, your sales, your turnover, your profit, etc. It's all there to be shared, you know, and to be uh, drawn upon and pulled out and, and deciphered and then allocated to the right part of the entry. The before and after, um, great if you've got, you know, a, a, an innovation or a product that you um, had before and you've innovated or developed it and now you've got a new product and you can show that visually, you can show that with your supporting evidence. Um, but the before and after is like where you've come from, you know, so what is it that helped build your business to that point? Then, you know, what changes in the business happened and how did that affect you? afterwards um you know and being able to share that journey and that story of growth and development within your team and within your company and there we go um so the next one is obviously about your market share so being able to understand where you sit in the marketplace um you know have some stats around that how many other businesses are you competing with legitimately competing with you know where do you fit in terms of that uh that whole industry sector um, you know, in what way, how many of your customers prefer you to work with than your uh, industry competitors? You know, have you got that information there? Have you got those stats there ready to, to pull on? And quotes and testimonials are brilliant because they, again, it's a bit like the award, you know, it's that third party recognition and endorsement of something that you have achieved and done that's given them a benefit. Uh, obviously, it has to be relevant for that award, but customer service is a brilliant one because you've got plenty of good customer um, uh, feedback, I hope, uh, which you could draw on, or it could be a staff testimonial if you're about people development, um, you know, so lots of different ways in which you can pull in some testimonials to help back up what you're saying. And then ways in which you can show it, um, this is an example of um, an award entry that I did for a client a few years ago, won't mind me sharing it, but this is how we shared his customer ratings as a business, um, you know, and looking at the social media side of things and you know all of that data the google analytics um you know the sales etc cetera, etc cetera. so it really helped to sort of present it in a very clear format for the judges to digest and understand and it showed that they had significant impact in what they were doing so here's a takeaway slide so again that will be uh, sent out to you as well as a bit of a refresh so case studies, again, these are a really good way of showing your um, success and backing up something that you've done that really had an impact or changed uh, a customer's or a, a staff's um, experience with you. So the key things to put in, and it's like GCSE English again, so you've got who, what, where, what, um, and, uh, you know, and how, uh, how did that make that change? How did that really um, make the impact uh, for that person what you were doing at the time so a ways in which you can sort of put that case study together it doesn't have to, obviously you've only got 400 words for your answers so you probably look at 200 words so it's not a lot here in terms of um, space that you've got word count space but again you could potentially Put that into the supporting evidence so i would avoid putting too much wordy stuff in the evidence because really 
the judges want to read your your entry rather than read through all the additional stuff that you've done in that. So you need to set the scene with your case study. Um, obviously, explain what the problem was that you were trying to solve, how you approached that problem and how you solved it, what the results were from that, and then just finish off with a customer testimonial, just sort of rounding it all up together. So that just and I would, you know, I'd highlight it. I'd put the you know, case study and then a sort of title next to it um, with underlined, bold, etc. You know, just make it so it does stand off the page as something quite different, but very, very connected to everything else that you're saying. OK, editing and proofing. Um, so again, as we've seen earlier, you know, use the bullet points. If you're struggling with you've got too much content, which often you know happens, then pulling it into bullet points as to these are the ways in which we do this, da, 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 you know, do some bullet points then because it helps you keep your word count down, make it really concise and really focused in what you're saying. Key points can be split out. So you're not just writing a load of paragraph of, full of text, because if you imagine as a judge, you know, you're sitting there and you've perhaps got 100 entries that you've got to read and that all the big blocks of text, you know, and it's like, oh, my goodness, it's such a huge job. And they put so much effort into making sure that they do it absolutely brilliantly to give you the fairest and the most professional response. So, you know, being able to break the question down to those key points that have come out of the criteria and the question, you know, put it in there and then just give that example as to why you are meeting that key point in the way in which you're doing it. And then testimonials, um, you know, if the if the editable document allows it to go into, you know, centered um, in your speech marks, in italics, with the name and the company underneath it or wherever they come from as a customer, etc. You know, put that in there. So, again, it lifts off the page. It's meant to be different, not just in the big body of the, the text. Word count rule. Um, so 50 to 100 words is simply not sufficient when you are answering a 400 word answer, I'm afraid. Um, my life is lived by word count and I get very, very excited when I edit down to 399 or to bang on 400. It makes me very, very happy. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Um, no, but ideally try to be within 10% of that word, uh, word count. So if you've got 400, you can know, look at being around 350 360 words at a minimum you know if you can be bang on the 400 fantastic um but you know do not go over by one word um please because that is very very annoying <laughs> for people like myself um less is more so again you know you you're not wanting to use all loads and loads of adjectives and long sentences and things where you just the judge is literally just going to be confused by the end of it be clear, be concise. You need the words um, to be like that anyway. Don't use your jargons. Don't use your, you know, all your, your company um, quips and that sort of thing. Be professional in how you're presenting it. You know, make sure that this is a, a piece of really solid marketing that you can use. So you want to do uh, be able to use it for other things as well. You know, you may be able to use that case study for other things, perhaps on your website. So it's worth making it really right now. Um, and then using uh, the benefit of it later. Um, spelling and grammar and punctuation, again, is quite important because we don't want to eat grandpa. So we just want to eat with grandpa. So, you know, it is important. Um, so, you know, try and proofread everything. Get somebody else, perhaps who's not in the business, to proofread um, your entries for you, who has an awareness of business and you know and company uh dealings etc um but get somebody who can have a look at that um for you and just give you that review and just go don't really understand that not quite sure about that too jargony don't know what you mean um or perhaps use the check and send service with myself as an offer as well if you needed to but you know if you've got somebody else to just have a quick look at it beforehand and give you some pointers that will definitely be a, a good part of the process for you OK, so we're coming almost to the end now. Um, supporting materials, you know, two to three sides of A4 um, at the most. Uh, turn it into a PDF document and send it on and submit it like that. Uh, 
you know, that helps if you've got a lot of images in there. It'll obviously keep the file size down as well. Um, I try to do quite a bit in Canva. There's other software things available, but if you haven't come across that, it's free and it really helps you develop a lot of your marketing tools and things and media posts as well for social media um, brilliantly. It's just got all the right sizes and everything. So, you know, it might be worth looking at that. You can upload all your images and then it just slots in and it looks really professional, um, you know, and, and something that you can uh, work with. Um, depending on what has already been included in the entry itself, you know, you may want to include other things like the testimonials and things might need to go in there if you haven't got enough space word count wise. Um, relevant images of the team. If you're doing community projects, you're doing a check presentation. If you've got an apprentice there and he's got the certificates, you know, this is your chance, chance to really show, um, you know, give the, the people side of the, the entry, you know, and, and let it jump off the page. You've got to get your logo in there, um, you know, your branding stuff in there, because that, again, just helps the judges understand who you are and how professional you are. The background information, whether that's a, a company um, listing of your history, if you've been going for 100 years, you know, you might want to do set up in 1900, 1910. This is our great, you know, and that helps to set the scene for the business as well and, and help the judges understand who you are and what you're about. Um, again, you can put your company graphs and things in there, uh, which is great. You know, anything that's visual, basically, um, that helps to support and endorse and is relevant for that award. So. You know, you're not going to put in your fleet of electric vehicles if you're you're just going for um, an individual award that has nothing to do with the environmental side of things. You know, it's got to be relevant to the award that you're going for. So this is an example of um, well presented supporting material. This is a client. She's very visual. Um, you know, she's got some um, testimonial stuff in there, but it was really this just supported everything that we were saying in the award itself. So, you know, it jumps off the page. It looks exciting. And she's got some celebs in there as well, which is great. Um, so that really comes to the end of it. So there are some opportunities if you need some additional help. And I would say, you know, if you are struggling, ask for help. It doesn't have to be me, but one of the team at the chamber or somebody else in the business. You know, it, if you are struggling to sort of get pen to paper effectively, um, you know, don't just sit there and leave it to the last minute, really, you know, get the help quickly. So if you need a 15 minute call to go through anything after this, please don't hesitate to book it in. If you want to access the half price check and send service from myself that will help, you know, do that critique effectively. I do track changes. So it's a bit like teacher's red pen. Um, but, you know, it will help to give you some pointers and to help flush out a bit more detail. Um, or if you find that suddenly you really don't have time to do this, but you really want to enter, then I can either do a rewrite of some existing content or I can write it from scratch from you. But again, that's entirely up to you. And it's completely, you know, you, you don't have to use any of the services if you don't want to. But they're there for you to use if you do. Um, so that's really it from me. So um, again, thank you ever so much to for inviting me to do this. I hope it's been of some um, interest and relevance for everybody and that you feel a little bit more confident about putting your entry together uh, for these awards. I think, again, it's you know, a fantastic opportunity to, to showcase everything that you have been doing and all the successes that you've had over the last 12 months, which, quite frankly, has been a bit of a tricky time. So, you know, if you're still in business, then it's worth entering these. Absolutely. Because you've got a story to tell. Um, so over to the team now, if there's anything else want to, to close or if there are any other questions that are coming. Um, thank you so much, Lucinda. Questions that they want to ask Lucinda or um, any uh, Stuart or Jane. If not, it's no problem. Or if you think of something after, um, just pop it over to me and um, I can point you in the right direction to the right person. But yeah, just thanks firstly, obviously to Stuart for his time as a, um, as a winner and a judge and to Jade for her time. And then thank you obviously to Lucinda. Um, I don't think I've got much to add to that. I think you've covered um, a lot of what obviously our frustrations um, and the thing we want most is for you to be able to showcase yourselves. And I think that's, often where the frustrations come from from judges that 
you know, uh, as a chamber, we know the great work that companies do. Um, but if you don't put that in your applications, then there's nothing we can do about it. So, yeah. Um, just, you know, really make sure you're selling yourselves. I think losing this point of getting somebody who's not in that company um, viewpoint is great because if they don't know what you're talking about, then the judges aren't going to know what you're talking about, most likely. Um, in terms of kind of from here, um, as mentioned, the entries are now open. You can request these from our website. You can enter as many categories as you would like to. Um, and each entry form is separate with separate judging dates for stage two. And I know this has been mentioned a few times, but it's different for this year. The dates are fixed. So there's no flexibility with those. So make sure you put them in your diary in case you do get to that stage two, because we can't, we, we can't change them. Um, in terms of the next steps, we will be running another seminar on the stage two process and so interview stage. That will most likely be when um, the, obviously the stage one has closed and, and we've got finalists and things. So you can book onto that. And even if you don't get, you know, finalized, feel free to book onto it because it's useful maybe if you're entering any other awards. Um, Lucinda has mentioned she's, available if anybody wants to have a chat with her and obviously she's got the services that she offers if you want that you know the full service or if you want that extra kind of set of eyes to, to proofread in terms of opportunities with the chamber you might have heard Stuart mention that he was obviously a stage two judge that was through his sponsorship so that's part of the sponsorship opportunity is you get to be a stage two judge and go out to these companies and build those organic uh, partnerships and relationships as well. And just really on um, another chamber kind of, we've started opening the live events up. And um, obviously we're doing it slowly because um, the guidance changes so rapidly or doesn't change rapidly as we were hoping. Um, so we've got a few live events coming up, but these are outdoor uh, networking events um, and they're all online as well. So if you do need anything, um, you've obviously got your account managers. There's myself and Jade who sit in, in the events team as well. Um, and just thank you again to Stuart, Jade and, and Lucinda for, for your time and for the session. And we'll hopefully see you at some more events in the future. Thank you very much.